everyone and welcome to another newscast. My name is Sam Healy and in this video we're going to tell you all of the latest news about most of our projects as well as the company. As always, if you don't want to watch the entire video, you can always skip to the part that interests you by utilizing the timestamps in the description below. Hell, The Last Saga launches on Kickstarter next Tuesday, May 12th, 2020 at 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Now, if you haven't joined our Facebook group yet, we reveal lots of information on our background story and we also have special things planned for the group members during the Kickstarter campaign. But let me give you some info on what Hell The Last Saga is. The game is a cooperative, narrative-driven board game with miniatures set in a Viking fantasy world of survival horror. It mixes dungeon crawl mechanisms with exploration phases on a modular hex tile board that allows you to gradually discover the island on which the adventure takes place, as well as mechanisms focused on resource management where you have to manage three fundamental resources to survive, food, wood, and morale. The game lets you lead a small group of 13 heroes, members of a clan called those who are the Peregrines. They've survived a horrific sea voyage to an unknown island to join their king. All these characters are really quite different, with various occupations, detailed pasts not necessarily known to all, and ranks corresponding to their station in Viking society. But despite their differences, the survivors will have to cooperate if they want to survive the extreme conditions in which they find themselves. Cold, hunger, madness, and the threat of unknown hostiles. Additionally, they will have to solve the mysteries surrounding the disappearance of their colony and prove themselves worthy of the saga that will remember their name. Now, Leo will be doing a live this weekend to talk about the game more, so make sure that you tune in and find out details about when this will be. A new iteration of the Joan of Arc rulebook is now available. As always, you'll be able to find both the English and French versions on the video description below, as well as in the Kickstarter update. Following your last feedback regarding the rulebook, we have updated it again and further, along with a group of backers who have been of great help in proofreading and improving the book. The development team has tried to get rid of every imprecision and imperfection present in this iteration. Following genu general backer feedback, we have also tweaked some rules, such as the gigantic attack that can be performed by big creatures. This will now be usable against enemy areas once per round without any other limitations. We would like to thank all of you for your patience and involvement with the game. All your feedback is truly helping us provide you with the best game that we possibly can. Moving on to Solomon Cain, first off, we need to remind you that we are still in line with the current production schedule and we will start the production process in late May and early June, as per the information shared with us from the factory. As we have previously said, we are taking advantage of the time that has been given to us in between to further playtest the game with different playtest groups and make sure everything flows smoothly. Playtests have been going well and only very minor changes were needed until now in the rulebook to clarify, clarify some further information. We will keep you posted about this process. Now, last week we showed you some images of the game from a prototype that we had printed in a local facility. This was, of course, not final production quality since it was not printed at the factory, but you did get a very good idea of what the game will look like. Leo did an unboxing of the game in last week's FAQ Live. Did you see it? If not, make sure to catch it. We will add the link uh, with a timestamp in the video description below, as well as in the Kickstarter update. And from next week on, we'll resume with our teasers. For Wrightbusters, we're happy to announce that shipping through Meeple Logistics has resumed. As we mentioned in our urgent update last Friday, this week shipping should resume in some areas, namely Germany, Luxembourg, the Netherlands, and Switzerland. 
Some of you have already reported that you started getting your games and we could not be happier that things are in motion again. We will keep you posted on how the process goes. We do want to remind you that next week we expect shipping to resume in the Shenzhen area and the United Kingdom. Furthermore, our development team is working on a big FAQ document that we will post as soon as possible, hopefully within this week. Some excerpts of this have been communicated in our social media and in particular in the Reichbusters Facebook group, where we are gathering any questions our backers have as well as any points that need clarification. At this point, we need to thank our dedicated fan Pascal Koshi for his help, since he's in touch daily with our game developers and is helping answer some of those questions. As more questions are added, this document is getting filled up quickly, so we will keep you informed for its eventual completion. Today in Super Fantasy Brawl, you're going to get a lot of goodies. Uh, in our first sighting, this is the final 3D deluxe box, box for the game. What do you think? We really like the sleek design and the white color that gives it a deluxified feeling. Also today, we're going to share with you the rules as those have been sent to the factory. As always, you can find the files in both languages in the description below, as well as in the Kickstarter update. In the next updates, we will be sharing with you the final champion and objective cards, so stay tuned. Today in Enchanter's East Quest, we present to you the Nagas. Loxophon artificers value balance and beauty over all things. Nagas also like beautiful things. Balance? Not so much. The items and enchantment in this deck are a great source of glory points and allow for man manipulation of cards in the other stacks. And on the other side, they offer only one-time bonuses or require a careful balance of items and enchantments. So make sure you balance your actions because the Nagas won't. Today is also the last day that the Pledge Manager is open, so be sure to finalize your pledges today. And finally, for Steam Watchers, like every week, the Steam Watchers team tunes, designs, scraps. Tunes, designs, and so on. The endless wheel of iteration sometimes has us reaching milestones, which is nice. This week, we reached the full Archon card set. Now, obviously, we had a core prototype set, but now we've finished an iteration for the full product. Some of those cards are going to be subject to change through extensive testing, though. We had originally planned to have expansion-specific cards and designed more than a few of them, but we ultimately decided against it. It was actually too much of a hassle because some felt situational and you had to pull them out of the Archon deck if you decided to play with any other expansion. They basically felt very diluted. So we went for a more straightforward core set with meaner, nastier, more complex Archon abilities in the expansions. But everything is compatible now. Most of the Archon cards benefit the Archon, but they usually have a huge impact on all of the other clans. Some, like this one, are symmetrical and should be unleashed only when appropriate. We also made a quick design change to the Archon title, by the way. Uh, beforehand, you would look at some cards and activate one. Now, it performs exactly like the Watcher title. You draw three and discard one at the bottom of the Archon deck and add the rest to your hand. And then you play one from your hand, essentially keeping a card. Uh, we added the keep part since it gives you more incentive to plan ahead and maybe pass early in the third round or take the Primus to ensure grabbing the right title to get that sweet Archon trigger in the last round. It's all about giving choice without making the game more complex and it harmonizes with the Watcher's rule so it's less cognitive load for players for roughly the same amount of fun. Now on to puzzle and riddle time. Since the team members all live in different cities and the development team is under lockdown in France, they meet via Skype. Sometimes a picture is worth a thousand words and they actually drew a few things on Microsoft Paint. So our riddle of the day is guess what the developers wanted to say.
Now, since we have two pictures, we're going to give you one this week with the answers right away and reveal the other one next week. Now, this one means, quote, a new incubation track for the Western Alliance. They have two additional spaces below the zero. Uh, they also have a special action token, which allows them to move their incubation cube two spaces backwards. Also, you'll have proof it was made on Microsoft Paint. And that's it for this week. Stay home, stay safe, play some games. We'll see you on the flip side. Take care.